One of the hottest debates in the fitness world is whether compound exercises are superior to isolation work. Whether it's better to perform full body compound training like squats, deadlifts and overhead presses or stick to muscle pumping exercises like the biceps curl, triceps extension or knee extension. While it is to say that compound movements are way more multifunctional and will give you the most bang for your buck return in many aspects like strength, mobility and muscle growth for beginners, there is a real world use of isolation exercises too. Hello there, so today we're going to discuss compound work versus isolation exercises, which one are better and which method do we use where, when and for who. I've recently wrote an article, compound versus isolation, it'll be down in the description below, you can feel free to check it out. So the things that we'll look at today is what are compound exercises, what are isolation exercises, We'll give a couple of examples, we'll see the pros and cons of each, we'll see the main use of compound exercise, we'll see the main cons and uses of isolation exercise and we'll sort of compare both to sort of conclude which ones are used when, where and for who to be used in the most optimal and effective way possible. We'll also see which one's better for strength and which one's better for overall mobility. Stay tuned. What are compound exercises? Compound exercises are exercises that involve multi-joint movement and incorporate larger muscle mass. So think of squats, think of deadlifts, of overhead press, dips, bench press, barbell bent over row, all of these exercises which have hinging or flexion or extension in more than one joint and also incorporate larger muscle mass or compound movements. These are your functional movements which can translate into better movement fluidity and functionality in your life. Compound exercises incorporate more muscles in the body. Although they do target specific muscles, like the squats are for leg strength, bench press are for chest and triceps, they do involve activation of accessory muscles that help push the weight. Also, compound exercises push you in higher ranges of motion and require better overall body stabilization. On the other hand, isolation exercises are exercises which have the main goal of stimulating or targeting one specific muscle and are actually the one joint type of exercises. Like if you were to do a biceps curl or a triceps extension, this will be your isolation exercise versus if you were to do an overhead press, you can see the flexion and extension in the elbow and the shoulder and the wrists, all of them are working and the larger muscle mass is incorporated. So so less muscle, one joint, isolation exercises, compound work, more joints, more muscle mass, higher metabolic effect. The isolation exercises are better at targeting a specific muscle which can be beneficial for those who've reached the plateau. The point of isolation work is to tear the targeted muscle, increase lactic acid and promote growth. In terms of targeting a specific muscle, it's superior to compound exercise and doesn't involve many accessory muscles. Which method is superior for beginner lifters? Usually it's the compound weightlifting. Why? First because it sets a foundation for your strength training later because it just activates more muscles, it teaches you how to perform the movement more correctly, it gives you more bang for your buck experience, so you get the higher metabolic effect when you train your whole body or do compound exercises versus isolating one muscle. Then it's better for increasing strength because with more muscle that can push, you have a higher nervous system activation and it pushes you in the uh, higher ranges of motion and higher amplitudes, which can be very great for improving proven and even maintaining your overall mobility. In general, the compound movements will always come first for beginners. They are the best way to build a strong foundation to increase strength and mobility, but also to promote muscle growth. For amateur lifters, especially in their first one to two years of training, compound exercises should dominate. What is the biggest pro or use of isolation exercise? First thing most important, isolation exercise can target a specific muscle and activate that muscle without a lot of nervous system stimulation. When you're very fatigued and you're central nervous and you're tired, isolation exercises will be more convenient and easier to perform than doing some heavy lifts 
compound that require a lot of coactivation and stabilization in the body. So in terms of getting that metabolic effect, tearing down the muscle, getting more lactic acid, getting more inflammation in the muscle, which sometimes to, for optimal hypertrophy you do want, isolation exercises will be superior, but compound work will always be foundational and usually the golden rule is to start with compound exercises and then as you progress or later in your workout to add a little bit of those isolation exercises. Isolation exercises are better at sculpting the body and promoting growth in specific muscles in the body without taxing the nervous system too much. Besides being superior in terms of tearing the muscle down, isolation work is also used for rehabilitation after injuries as an efficient way to use the muscle without high loads and pressure on the joint. Which training method should come first, compound or isolation? The golden rule is that you start building from the compound movements and then if you're doing split training or you're looking for maximal hypertrophy, you're actually at the end of your workout, you start incorporating some isolation movements. In general, for beginner lifters and most people, especially for those training strength, Compound movements always is the foundation and comes first. In rare cases, bodybuilders, when they want to target and feel a specific muscle later on in the compound work, they might start doing the isolation work first to really target and feel the muscle, pump it, and then when they translate that training into compound work, work they can feel the muscle more. For example, you could do a couple of triceps extensions at first, even though if it's isolation, to feel the muscle, and then when doing bench press or overhead press, you can be better at really feeling that muscle. In terms of schedule and exercises in your training, the golden rule is to put compound lifts first when you're well energized and fresh to the workout. This is because they will cause the most fatigue, incorporate the largest muscles and are hardest to be done. Compound before isolation will also improve activation of your nervous system which can make your lifts easier later on as you improve performance acutely throughout the session. So here are three examples of compound versus isolation work. So the first one is squat versus leg extension. Squat is the functional exercise that incorporates more muscle, while leg extension targets the quadriceps and there is more emphasis on the quads because there's just knee extension and other muscle aren't, accessory muscles aren't overactivated. Joint-wise, the squat is a multi-joint. As you can see, there is hip, knee, and even ankle flexion and extension throughout the movement, while there's only one joint, the knee, that flexes and extends during the knee extension phase. Then there is bench press versus triceps cable extension. Bench press is the compound lift where you incorporate not just your chest but also triceps and front deltoid muscles. On the other hand there is the triceps extension which is in only one joint which is the uh, elbow and it only extends activating your triceps. It is easier on the nervous system and the only joint that pulls an extension is the elbow. The bench press is of course more functional movement. Uh, it requires more shoulder stabilization and activates more muscle. The last example is Arnold press versus lateral dumbbell raise. Before you see on this video, comment which one you think is compound and which one you think it's isolation work. The Arnold press is the functional exercises. If you guessed it, congratulations. Hit the like button. For you, not for me. It targets your deltoid muscles, but your triceps and trapezius are also used to push the weight overhead. It's a refined, more complex and functional movement. While the lateral dumbbell raise only includes abduction of the arm and it targets mainly the mid or front deltoid muscle, it's a just one joint exercise. Now we will go through a couple of points of what are the main uses of compound versus functional exercise and which one is superior where. So first one is compound exercises burn more calories. This is very logical since when you're doing compound exercise, not just the main muscles, which are large, but also the accessory stabilizing muscles are activated. This means you activate larger muscle mass, your heart needs to pump out more blood, your lungs need to work harder to bring oxygen and nutrients to those muscles, and overall a larger portion of your body is activated meaning you do more work in less time meaning you burn more calories with compound exercises 
Point number two is compound work is better at building strength. If we're talking about maximal strength, that's the ability to lift higher load from A to B. To do this, you need to work your central nervous system to stimulate those muscles and really do that contraction to lift the load. So it's a completely different training from hypertrophy. And in order to do this, you need to challenge your nervous system in a type of movement that will stimulate it to the max. And which movement would stimulate the central nervous system to the max? Compound movements, of course. Why? Because you can push the highest load in the compound movements. You can push the highest load during the bench press, the squat, or the deadlift, but not in the triceps extension. That won't cut it. Point number three is compound work is superior to isolation for mobility. Why? Because it requires from you to go in deeper amplitudes of movement and higher ranges of motion. And mobility is just that. The ability to activate the elastic and stretched out muscle and also add stabilization as additional component of mobilization. And this is exactly what happens during squats. You go in a deep squat, you do partially stretch out some muscles, you also activate them, and you also activate accessory muscles around them. And that's mobility. While if you were to do just knee extension, that isolation work will work the muscle, but it won't do nothing for your mobility. Matter of fact, if you're doing too much isolation work without proper mobility or flexibility training, you can actually shorten the muscle if you don't train in higher ranges of motion. This is why compound is superior in this match. Point number four is the compound movement stimulate more coactivation and is better for stability. Think of doing the deadlift, the unilateral or bilateral Arnold press or overhead press or bench press or dips. All of this require coactivation of different accessory muscles left to right, front to back so that you can keep a stable and neutral position and perform the movement. While if you were only to sit down and do some knee flexion, there's no stabilization that much required. If you were only to do triceps extension with a cable, there's really only stabilization back down here. But in squats, in bench press, in deadlifts, your whole body needs to work to stabilize itself. Isolation is better for targeting and tearing a specific key muscle. So although compound work is the basic and foundation of everything in strength training, for people who want to have optimal muscle growth, isolation can be part of the work. Especially for bodybuilders who want to sculpt a specific muscle, doing bench press simply won't really target back head of your triceps, while doing some triceps extension in an adaptive position will. So in terms of getting more lactic acid and causing more inflammation that will drive even more higher adaptive responses in the muscle for optimal growth, Isolating once you are advanced and you want maximal or optimal hypertrophy will come in handy. The other factor where isolation will be superior is after injury, so in the rehab phase. So usually if you were to do the squat but you have injured knee or ankle, you would have to push that joint through flexion and extension which might be painful. On the other hand, you can still stimulate the muscle and prevent muscle atrophy while doing isolation work, which can be adapted in a way that doesn't put at all or puts minimal pressure on the joints or tendons around, but still stimulates the muscle. Last but not least, both compound and isolation are great, but isolation can be better at correcting imbalances. So in people who have imbalances, let's say one of your shoulders, the right shoulder is weaker, you can simply do a two arm push and then just do another set on the right arm just to stimulate that shoulder more. Or for any other movements, doing one to two sets more for the weaker muscle group can actually get to compensate and improve the muscle strength to be relatively comparable or actually the same with the muscle on the other side. So you can reduce the muscle imbalances in the body. That's around it for this video guys, big thanks for watching, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Perform more compound work, that's what I'm trying to say, like, subscribe, 